G'day all from Perth, Western Australia. My name's Brennan and you're wondering where Andy is. Well, Andy's still in England and uh, you're wondering why I'm here. Monday complete. That was the end of the work day. One down, four to go. Um, while I was away last week, a parcel arrived and I'd previously sent some beer to Perth, Australia, not directly, because that's not allowed, but I'd sent some to Aussie Brendan's mother-in-law, I think it was, um, so he could sample it, because he's following and he's very supportive on the social media, and uh, we're sort of mates, I think, now. Anyway, he's sampled the beer, he's done some little video reviews, show you them in a minute, and uh, he sent me a box back via mother-in-law mule, and here it is. And I haven't opened it, so I'm going to open it with you, or you're going to open it with me. I'm going to see what's in it, because I think this might be my Monday night beverage, possibly. Although it doesn't feel that heavy. Let's get it out, take it over there. Okay, let's have a gander. I hope it's not perishable food, because it's been in here a week. It has been in the fridge, however, because my family know the sort of stuff that's likely to arrive here. It's probably alcohol based from you guys. Uh, can't get in it. There we go. With my best steak knife as well. Right, okay. I think we're open. I think we're open. Is this a letter? No, it's just a label. Oh, 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 as oh, a note. It says, Dear Andy, I am sending these to you on behalf of my son-in-law, Brendan, in Australia. Hope you enjoy them. Shirley. Oh, 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 what is this? This is a four pack. Thank you, Brendan. I really appreciate it, mate. This is a four pack containing Bright Tank Brewing Co. Uh, Chalk Face Killer, Feral Brewing Co. Hop Dog. Wow, that Chalk Face is uh, 6.4. An American Pale at, what is that? There's 10 cents back on the can, mind you. Don't sure, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to collect that. Wilson Brewing Co. Rough Seas Pale Ale. I think I saw Brendan drinking one of those on one of his videos. And Redcastle Brewery Bitter, West Australia. Benahy Brothers Brewery. Amazing. And they're these funny little 375 Australian cans. Can't you drink a full pint, lads? Come on. Mind you, mine are only 440. Well, well, well. I'm going to have those in a second. Meanwhile, here's Brendan's videos. Well, I've been talking to Andy for quite a few months now. And uh, thanks to my in-laws who just rocked up. Uh, I've managed to get two of Andy's fantastic ales. Get Lockie and uh, Moss and Dragon. I'm really excited to try and taste these. You know, the furthest way that Andy's seen his beers around the world could say the other side or down under. Uh, I've been following Andy since the beginning of the channel. I really enjoyed the uh, the good, the bad, the ugly and I really like supporting uh, small startups and you know we all start off you know all home brewers uh, you know so it's really important to you know support these people so thanks Andy and I look forward to chasing these beers later on. So made it back home uh, Wait a little while, they're nice and chilled. So I'm gonna crack open the Got Loggy. That's their first cab off the rank. So I'm really excited for this beverage. It's been a long time coming. So give it a nice pour. Look at that. A lovely Perth homebrew share 
glass. It's a nice colour, nice golden amber here. Smells delicious. Oh, that's beautiful. Nice job, Andy. All right. Now for the next one, which is Moss and Dragon. I'm looking forward to this one as well. Pour it in. Got a bit of head going. I oh, need a bit of head. Another Perth homebrew share. So on this glass, uh, if you can see here, there's a nice hop swan, which is our local uh, local uh, local logo. So nice amber colour for this one. Smells absolutely divine. Oh, and that's absolutely delicious as well, Andy. So thanks again, mate. It's been a while coming, but. I'm super stoked that I finally managed to taste a couple of your beverages. All right, mate, all the best, and I look forward to the next couple of episodes. All right, uru. Well, what have we got here? A little parcel that's just arrived, and I've got no idea what's in here. Um, no advance notice. I think this might be something to do with Mr. Tom Bacon, friend of the brewery from Bath House. Bath House is where we buy our Citra and Talus from. Um, and they're good enough to hold some on one side for us, so we just pull it in as we need it. And uh, it, it, it just removes any, uh, any doubt from the availability of those hops, because we need them for our, our main beer for Murgy Strait. So I'm going to open this and see what's in it. It's only quite light. It's definitely not hops. Let's have a look. with the trusty steak knife, as usual. Um, it's Wednesday now, by the way, guys, and uh, Brian, the landlord, is finally out of the unit. Uh, I popped down the other night, and it was like, um, it was full of mannequins, because obviously that was the previous business that was run from there. Brian used to do a lot of work with um, shop fitting, so there's quite a few mannequins in there. It looked like it'd been a terrible, terrible disaster. Um, so let's crack this open and see what's in there. I think it might be what I think it is, based on the weight alone. <laughs> oh, yes! Keep calm and add more hops. Some stickerers. Oh, I do like that one. That's a beauty. That's going right on the, uh, that's going right on the tank, that one. So... Uh, Bath House Giant Hop sticker, and another, uh, what is that? It's like a heart trace with a hop in the middle, hop trace. Keep calm and add more hops. Oh, there's a note. Hopefully this won't end up like the brew one. <laughs> Team Bath has X. Thank you guys. I'm assuming Tom is responsible. Let's get it on. And then I get, better get back to the day job. Let's take a look. And there it is. In all its beauty. This is good quality as well. I can tell it's thick. That's nice. That's not one to be worn on the brew day. I think I'm going to keep this one for best. Thanks guys, Bath Has X, you're superstars. Cheers. Right, we just need a sign now. It's Thursday night. Um, Brian has left the building. Uh, everything that remains in here now is available for me to use however I see fit. Um, I've got David here in a minute to weigh up a few things, like how many sheets of plaster board we need and how much of this OSB board we need and a few other things. Um, I need to call the cold room guy because we've had a bit of a hitch. Uh, the idea was to put a new, an actual cold room, cold room across the back, but we have discovered we don't have three phase in that corner. I do have three phase going down to the copper in this side around there, but I haven't got any spare capacity. So it means running another cable from that corner up 
over the roof, down there, across that wall, and down into the electrical um, fuse box thing down there. And uh, it's horrendous to cost. When I did it last time, it cost a fortune. I, I can't afford to run another one. So we're gonna have to do it single phase, which mean that, that means that cold room is not gonna work for us. So we're gonna repurpose some things in good old four priests fashion. Um, we're either gonna A, relocate the existing cold rooms over there into that corner, or we've got this structure of racks here that is very modular and we could basically create an insulated cube inside of that. And I think that is the preferable option. A few, sh a few sheets of uh, this stuff, king span type insulation, foam insulation to build that cube inside. Uh, lift, lift the lower level of the racks up so we've got the height and that with three of those racks back to back that gives us a good sized cold room bigger than the existing one um, and then we can fit the bar in there in the corner anyway we'll talk through that with David when he arrives but that's the plan uh, I've got eight sheets of plasterboard to fit up there um, we've got to decide what we're doing with this wall I think it's already boarded I think we're going to use some filling jointing compound stuff fill the cracks between the boards and just whack a load of emulsion on it with rollers. Um, has to be the plan. Um, and then if we want, we can sort of clad the bottom half with something just for decoration. Um, and what that gives us then in here is a load of space. If you assume that we're going to come to about here, roughly, it gives us loads of space for customers. I reckon we get six of those, um, six of those tables in here. I think those Munich style ones, maybe five. Uh, I'm room for a couple just uh, in, into next door or outside even in the summer um, I've applied for a temporary license license is dead funny right well not funny haha -ha, just funny ouch um, we are licensed up to that point for sale of alcohol for consumption on or off the premises um, and the transaction has to take place in here um, this, this is the point of sale and the bar on the drawings that we sent through to Cheshire's Council shows it there. That ain't going to work now, right? This is before we knew what was going on. We're in there now. Um, in order to get the license variation, it's going to take a few months because there's some consultation and stuff that needs to take place. So you can apply for a temporary events notice, which we've done, um, which says we're already licensed in here. That's all fine. But in there, we would like to be able to position a bar adjacent to this unit and be able to take orders for beer in there and serve them for consumption either on or off the premises um, according to the terms and hours of the license nothing else changes so that submission's been put in uh, unless i hear back to the negative then it's automatically approved so we'll just keep our fingers crossed you've got to give them 10 days notice and we've got we've got more than that so there's, there's plenty of time bit of wiggle room so while we're waiting for david i'm going to get some of these casks washed because i can't move that middle tank uh, that one because it's full of ale um, so I need to get that into casks um, I'm then going to move that tank into the corner in here behind the bar so you'll be able to buy tank beer fresh from the bright tank how about that and if I need to can from it I can so that's going to go in there but obviously I need to move it empty put it in there put a little hatch in the wall so we can get the hoses through uh, and then we can fill it and leave it in that corner. Uh, that's the plan so far. Where's David? Good evening. It's Friday night and it's 8.30. After work, we've, we, I say we, more than me, we've come down and really made a start and discovered a lot of stuff left behind that is absolutely useless. Bricks, we've got a lot of bricks. Some, I don't know what this is, some sort of, scaffold poles or something anyway lots of junk cleared all the shelves off um if anyone in middle which is having a bonfire soon we've got plenty of wood uh, lots of mdf um, bits of racking but let me show you the progress what we have made built oh this light keeps turning itself off it'll come on again in a minute so we have discovered this light turns itself off and on randomly. It's doing that itself, by the way. No one's messing with the light switch. Um, in those rare moments of, of daylight, um, you'll see we have 
started to construct the cold room from these racks. Um, so basically we turned it round 90 degrees, emptied all the water off it obviously, turned it round 90 degrees and we're now boarding it out ready. We'll board the front, the doorway in the centre there and that should give me maybe three metres, well 2.7 by 2.7 metres roughly, just plenty of space. Uh, David is using his new brand new Makita jigsaw. I don't know if you can hear me, let's come in here. Um, we've had a grain delivery. I've got 40 litres of white emulsion paint and I've got an army of people coming down tomorrow. Let's wait for him to finish making noise. <laughs> 